What's going on, guys? I'm Jada Black. Salute to everybody this morning. Rachel Nichols apparently has been removed from ESPN programming, and they have canceled her show, The Jump. It was a show that was basically of her creating because she wanted to speak about uh, the NBA. Um, I believe she had may have left ESPN and then came back, and this was something, The Jump, that was going to be her and her and other co-hosts, but she would be the one anchoring the show. And now that's gone. And now she appears to be gone from ESPN, even though she still has a little bit of time left on her deal. And this has a lot to do with the Maria Taylor situation, man. Even though ESPN let Maria Taylor go, uh, Rachel Nichols was not out of the woods. Now, I've, I've done a couple of different videos about this Maria Taylor situation. I will probably was one of the first people to speak about her not resigning and then it ended up being true. Her now, now she's a part of another network. And again, this is very unfortunate for Rachel Nichols, but Rachel Nichols is one of these people who pushed, you know, this woke identity politics. And so it's ironic that now she is the victim of it. And what people have to understand is no matter how woke you are, there's going to be a, there's going to come a time where it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. Now let's get into this article from the bleach report. Also have another article here from the in the NY post that talks about how ESPN embarrassed itself. And yes, they did. They've been embarrassing themselves for a little bit now. ESPN has removed Nacho Nichols from NBA programming and canceled the jump an afternoon NBA show hosted by Nichols since 2016, according to John uh, of sports business journal. We mutually agreed that this approach regarding our NBA coverage was best for all uh, concerned uh, ESPN senior VP uh, production. David Roberts said in a statement, Rachel is an excellent reporter, host and journalist, and we thank her for her many contributions to our NBA content. That lets you know that they did not want to fire her. But they, but the network has taken such a turn to the left that there's no going back. So they have to put an uh, extra bit of symbolism out here because they did let Maria Taylor go. You got a lot of people who sided with Maria Taylor on social media and ESPN, like a lot of these networks, care so much about what Twitter thinks. Nichols has more than a year remaining on her contract with ESPN, but she reportedly is not expected to appear on television during that time. Are they going to pay her to sit at home? Is that what they're going to do? Uh, did they come to some agreement so she wouldn't sue them? Because you got to remember, Rachel Nichols got caught on a hot mic of a piece of equipment that was provided to her by ESPN. That's how they was able to get the audio of her complaining about not being a part of the NBA Finals coverage last year. And maybe they came to some agreement they would not fully fire her. They would just take her off TV. But she has a year left on a contract. Are you going to pay her to stay home? And this is according to Rachel Nichols. This is a tweet from Rachel Nichols. Got to create a whole show and spend five years hanging out with some of my favorite people, talking about my favorite thing, basketball and internal. Thank you to our amazing producers and crew. The jump was never built to last forever, but it sure was fun. More to come. She may be doing something else. I, I don't think this is the end for Rachel Nichols. I really don't. Because it seemed to me that her and ESPN are still on good terms. So either they're going to move her to just doing other things. Maybe they'll switch sports. Maybe she'll start covering, you know, football or maybe something else. Who knows? But... I don't think that she's done by any stretch of the imagination. Um, fake outrage moves on. I mean, Maria Taylor's good where she is. Uh, I, I don't think that she's hurt for money. I don't think that I think she seems to have moved on. I think a lot of other people need to as well, because listen, this is what happens in the woke wars. When you have woke wars, there's going to be collateral damage and the collateral damage was Rachel Nichols. And I think the, the, the more that, Time goes on. I don't think people are going to be as outraged. I just think that she might need a change of scenery. I really do. 
Um, but again, Rachel Nichols has a lot of connections um, within sports media. Um, again, ESPN and her are not seemingly on bad terms because, again, she could sue them. She still could sue them uh, because of that, that situation that occurred. I just think that you have somebody who, again, has tried her best publicly to be as woke and, you know, activist as possible but still became a victim of her own situation, so to speak, you know? The decision comes nearly two months after Ken, Kevin Draper of the New York Times reported on a recording of a private phone call in 2020 in which Nichols was heard suggesting former NBA colleague, uh, former, yeah, 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 former ESPN colleague Maria Taylor had been selected as the host of of NBA countdown for the NBA finals because she's black. And she was actually talking to an associate of LeBron James, but y'all don't hear nothing about that. Every, all the blame has been placed on her, but not the person she was venting to. If you need, if, uh, if you need to give her more things to do because you're feeling pressure about your crappy long time record on diversity, which by the way, I know personally from the female side of it, like go for it, Nichols said in the recording, just find it somewhere else. You're not gonna find it from me or taking or taking my thing away. ESPN will now move forward without either studio hosts, uh, but according to um, John reporting that Many more changes are coming. Of course, more changes are coming. We already seen Max Kellerman. I did a video on it. Y'all go and check it out. The whole Stephen A. Smith situation. And that's why I'm going to move on to here talking about ESPN embarrassing themselves. Because <clears throat> not only is have they sat down Maria Taylor, well, Maria Taylor, they've sat down Rachel Nichols, but they also allowed Stephen A. Smith to boot, to, to get them to boot Max Kellerman off of first take. It's like a network that has no leadership. None. Say whatever you want about uh, John Skipper when he was running that network. They actually had leadership. They actually had leadership. There's no leadership at ESPN right now. It's reactionary. Everything is reactionary. It's according to this NY Post, in the history of sports media management, the way ESPN handled Rachel Nichols' situation may not be the worst, but it can make a case. Maybe Nichols always deserved to be fired for her privately taped comments in which she lamented about her perception of ESPN's poor diversity record and the idea that executives in the aftermath of the discussion on race after the George Floyd situation were going to take away her contractually agreed upon job as the host of the NBA Finals and award it to Maria Taylor, who, unlike Nichols, is black, but someone as respected as NBA commissioner Adam Silva did not think so. Whatever view is correct, a nickel show, the jump was officially canceled Wednesday, and she was essentially fired by ESPN, who will pay her the final year of her contract will likely approach as two million. The fiasco was the result of the embarrassing, indecisive management from ESPN chairman Jim Pitaro on down. Yeah, because I tell you, the, the leadership has not been strong. And I think it has a lot to do, once again, with the woke culture of Twitter and all these people who are looking for symbolic gestures. And Jimmy Pitaro has, has been a guy since he's been in that position, try to mediate it, try to, you know, instead of just being a boss and thinking about his network, he's thinking about what are social media is gonna say. And that's why where we now he did make some some good decisions a few years ago. He got rid of some people who were not good for that network. Uh, but also lately, um, it just seemed like they have been starting to go downhill with their coverage. The ratings have not been strong at all. And we all know when a company as big as ESPN, they rely on people viewing their product. And less and less people are viewing their product because of the over politicizing of certain situations. More than a year ago, ESPN did not do anything of substance about Nichols' comments when they first found out about them. Nothing, nada. ESPN management felt Nichols' words were so harmful, it only made a rule that Taylor and Nichols would not appear on air together. Passive meet aggressive. But that's not all. ESPN, uh, during that year, ESPN thought 
His NBA crew was doing such a stellar job. It promoted Mike Schiffman to senior vice president. Schiffman reported to Stephanie Drewley, who oversaw the NBA at the time. The duo was responsible for making peace between Nichols and Taylor. It never happened. It was because Maria Taylor did not want to squash it. Maria Taylor was the one who got her feelings hurt and did not want to um, make things right. Or not make things, not on her end. I'm not saying she had to, but she was the one who wanted the beef. Rachel Nichols wanted to squash it. We have to be honest here. Maria Taylor was the one who carried the grudge. She carried the grudge. Not saying that she's supposed to forgive Rachel Nichols, but did Rachel Nichols really insult her? Or did Rachel Nichols speak honestly about ESPN and how they deal with diversity? In July, after the New York Times published Nichols' private comments, ESPN took Nichols off the sideline for the NBA Finals, but had her continue as the host of the jump. Who this made sense to was never exactly clear. On the eve of the NBA Finals, Nichols led the jump by first saying a reporter should never make the story about themselves. She then started the program apologizing in the aftermath of the Times story. Again, this is how the jump was led on the eve of the NBA Finals. She, uh, uh, could she hear her own words? A day later, with Game 1 the NBA Finals that night, the jump was off air. ESPN decided there's too much heat and gave the show a day off. It returned the next day. Meanwhile, Silver wondered during his finals press conference why ESPN didn't find a resolution between Nichols and Taylor earlier and said that careers shouldn't be erased by a single comment. Well, he is right. I don't think that Rachel Nichols' career should be ended on a single comment. I just think you have somebody who was <clears throat> in their feelings like Maria Taylor was who exacerbated the situation. I'm just being real with you. I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and act like Maria Taylor is a victim. Maria Taylor has been very political. She called she called Drew Brees live on TV a, dis, a discriminist. You know, she called him the. She basically called him a hater of black people live on TV. So Maria Taylor is not a victim. She has said a lot of things that I vehemently disagree with. And I feel like we're very decide uh, was very divisive. That doesn't mean I, I dislike her at all. I don't dislike anybody, but you have to call things out. You have to call things out. Maria Taylor ain't no victim in this situation. The only thing that I can see that Rachel Nichols did wrong was that she spoke her mind and got caught. I would prefer people to be honest than to be liars. Because there's a lot of people that don't like black people that pretend to like them every single day. But if you were to talk to them behind the scenes, you would, or, you know, people around people that they're comfortable with, they will show you their true face. Rachel Nichols basically said they took me off TV to be uh, political and to play to the crowd. And I, I don't feel like that should have happened. I don't think that she disrespected Maria Taylor. I just, she basically called Maria Taylor a token. Without saying that, I mean, was she lying in that moment? Was she lying? And again, this ain't a defense of Rachel Nichols. I'm just being honest. Looking at this thing has how it has played out. You know, uh, if there is no secret agreement preventing any legal action, Nichols may have a case to sue. Nichols was was in Florida during the 2020 NBA bubble and failed to turn off her camera in her hotel room the day in one day in July with the camera running. Nichols annoyingly being taped complained during a phone call to one LeBron James advisors, Adam Mendelson. OK, and that's that's pretty much all here. I'm going to speak on here. But yeah, it was a total embarrassment and ESPN has done it to themselves. They put themselves in this situation. And they have nobody but themselves to blame at the end of the day. I just think that there were two people that were collateral damage in this situation. You have Maria Taylor and you had Rachel Nichols. But I think Rachel Nichols took the, the brunt of it. Maria Taylor's going to move on. But I think that Maria Taylor's career is definitely going to be forever damaged by this situation. Unfortunately for her. So let me think in the comment section below and I'll let me know your thoughts.